Welcome into Morning Invest on this February 16th. I'm Clayton Morris. Natalie's off today. David's running the show in the control booth. And coming up on the show, we're going to be looking at the very latest out of Canada and the Freedom Convoy. And we got some troubling news overnight from the former bodyguard to Justin Trudeau, who is the spokesperson for the Freedom Convoy. We've been hearing rumblings about trouble inside the Freedom Convoy. Well, could there be a false flag operation coming from the Trudeau government? Wouldn't put it past them. We're going to tell you what he has to say about this troubling news out of the Freedom Convoy this morning. We're also going to look at the de-escalation of tensions in Russia. Russia says, hey, nothing to see here. We're packed up our stuff. We're just running normal drills and routines, and this is a failure of the Western media. But NATO this morning says not so fast. We need more money. We need more troops because war is still on the table. What's the truth? Do you believe your governments? <laughs> we'll get to the bottom of this and the very latest from Russia. And we're also going to look at these vaccines for kids and really troubling. This is troubling data coming out. Specifically, one of the authors of this new study is the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, co-authoring this new study. But the mainstream media is ignoring it in the United States. We have to go to Israel to get the very latest on what's happening with these vaccines and our children. Because the mainstream media in the United States is bought and sold by these big corporations, these big pharmaceutical companies. So this episode, this show is not brought to you by Pfizer. This show is not brought to you by Northrop Grumman. This show is brought to you by my delicious cup of coffee. And uh, it's free. So please subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe because Morning Invest starts right now. Keep doing that. Welcome, welcome, welcome into Morning Invest on this Wednesday. Let's go to Canada, shall we, and bring you the very latest on what's happening with the Freedom Convoy. So Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Monday, of course, elected to turn Canada into a totalitarian dictatorship by invoking what's known as the Emergencies Act. Sounds like you put this in place when there's an emergency. So what exactly is the emergency? I don't know. You tell me. But it's a successor to the War Measures Act. So it's like a, a younger brother of the War Measures Act, which gives himself the power to walk all over the rights of the Freedom Convoy protesters, treat Canadian citizens worse than terrorists, essentially. And now we're learning just how far they're actually willing to go to suppress human rights in Canada. I mean, look at these. Look at these terrorists. Don't they look fierce? These people handing out food to homeless people. In fact, did you read all the reports of them handing out food to homeless people? These truckers are helping homeless people all over the place, giving food out of their own bags to help. These are terrorists, according to the Canadian government. Well, we've already reported that the emergency powers basically will give them the ability to seize bank accounts and financial service providers. They can now freeze or suspend the accounts of anyone that they suspect of supporting these truckers without a court order. GoFundMe accounts. I've never even heard of this service. Have you heard of this service, the Give, Send, Go service? I've never even heard of that. I had after this. Yeah, I had. Maybe it's like a Canadian one. Anyway, they, they're seizing no, it's, that it's one US. too. It's out of it's out of like New Jersey or something like that. It's it's U.S. Oh, so hey, you know they're going after your GoFundMe accounts. They're going after your Give Send Go account as well. It's been labeled a terrorist organization for collecting donations in support of the truckers. <laughs> of course, the seizing of funds also extends to cryptocurrency. We covered that in the newsletter this morning. By the way, we have a kick-ass newsletter should read it every morning if you go to morninginvest.com and subscribe. One of the things we covered, though, is that over a million dollars in cryptocurrency has been raised for these truckers. The problem is that a lot of these truckers don't know how to access it. In fact, one of the truckers was like, this is great, but we have no idea what the hell to do with this Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, I totally understand that. I mean, OK, so now well, you have to get a digital wallet. You have to open up a Coinbase account or whatever it is. And you have, you know, and now if those those same government wallets or those same wallets are being controlled and, and seized by the government, good luck. Getting how is that those possible apps. without the security code? Like how there's no way they could access it. Right. They'd and how are they going to prove that they have? So they open up a digital wallet. They say, I'm a trucker. And then a certain amount of money is dispersed to their wallet, much the same way that El Salvador was setting up funding for their people when they rolled out Bitcoin. I don't know. I know it's a complicated mess. And then again, yeah. they're not sitting there with internet access, right? They're sitting there using their phones. They're they're sitting in their trucks. So it's not like they're like sitting at a desktop computer where you can get your banking information out and handle all of this. They're kind of doing this on the fly, you know? But 
We got word of a troubling story late last night that involves planting fake evidence at the feet of these Freedom Convoy truckers. Daniel Bulford, who is the spokesperson for the Freedom Convoy, and by the way, he served as a sniper in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, okay? He also was a bodyguard for Justin Trudeau. Okay, that's how plugged in this guy was. He's now a spokesperson for the Freedom Convoy. He released a video on Twitter claiming that Trudeau's government is putting forth a potential false flag operation using stolen weapons that were seized, over 2,000 stolen weapons that were seized. They're using that to discredit the Freedom Truckers, taking these guns, placing them near or at the blockade in Ottawa. Here's Daniel in his own words from sources after he spoke to in law enforcement that warned him of what's about to happen. Listen to Daniel. Today, on February 14th, we received information from multiple believed reliable sources that firearms may be planted in Ottawa, specifically around the Freedom Convoy, to discredit the protest and to use as a pretext to forcibly remove peaceful protesters. Due to the nature of this information, we felt it prudent to notify the public in the interest of their safety. This private intelligence correlates with the approximately 2,000 firearms stolen in Peterborough, Ontario on Sunday morning, February 13th. Our sources have notified us that these weapons may be planted by nefarious elements, and at this point, we have no further knowledge about who is behind this act of sabotage. As soon as we receive this information, we notify the appropriate authorities with whom we are collaborating, including... Yeah, so they... Again, just to be clear on this guy. Who is this guy? He's a sniper, was a former sniper with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Okay? He was a bodyguard for Justin Trudeau. He has many sources in law enforcement. You don't just get rid of your Rolodex when you leave that job, do you? Especially at that level. Right. And think about that, right? Have you, any of you watching right now ever worked at a place where you've had friends that still maybe work at that place, but you no longer work at that place? Do they occasionally text you and let you know what's up, what's going on at that place? Of course you do. Now imagine well, being I'm a sure. sniper. <laughs> yeah, imagine being a government <laughs> sniper, right? You're kind of and I'm sure in. the media is trying to paint him as a conspiracy theorist or something. Like, have they gone after him yet? Or Of course. Of course they have. But you know what? He, they came after him a few weeks ago, of course, when he told, when he really revealed this story, when he said, hey, these, tr all, you know, we're hearing reports of people being arrested at the, the Freedom Rally, the Freedom Convoy, people being arrested, and there's like some, some agitation happening. He's like, we want to know, we want you to know, and I'm glad they got out in front of this. He's out there saying, look, these people are not us. These people are not associated with us, but they're trying to paint them as us. He came out with that story. Troublemakers are not associated with the Freedom Convoy. This was him a few weeks ago. And of course, they painted him as a, you know, he's a terrorist and he's full of crap and all this stuff. That's how the mainstream media portrayed it. Now, he has many sources inside of law enforcement. He was told through his law enforcement sources that this was happening, that thousands of guns were stolen in Peterborough just the other day. We know that. That is a fact. He immediately contacted the Ottawa Police Service. He also contacted the Ontario Provincial Police and the Canadian Mounted Police for whom he used to work. And he told them what he said and what he had. He said, look, we, 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 we want to employ any demonstrators, if we see anything suspicious out here, to call 911 immediately. He said, you know, we've got to make sure we have so many of our people here who are in this Freedom Convoy left their homes to demonstrate peacefully. He said, we're pleading with all these people and police, do not act indiscriminately. Like, if you see some of this stuff, don't just jump on someone for this. And he's calling upon the people, he's calling, in fact, in one of the things he said in this speech is he's calling upon journalists like ourselves here to, to, to spend more time to turn over your investigative talents on this matter. So if anybody who is watching this show, contact me directly. Anybody who's who lives in this area, who's seen something like this, let me know. You can reach out to me directly. Many of you already have, speaking to many of you. Well, and the good thing is getting out in front of it like this can make it not happen because they're like, dang, they're now yeah. people now now too many people know. So it is something you need to get out. And I'm glad that's why he got out in front of this a few weeks ago. He's like, hey, these people that you're hearing about who there was like some fight, there was like somebody uh, that was there was some personal property destroyed. 
Um, and there was uh, like, you know, some racist memorabilia being handed around or whatever. He's like, those people aren't us. <laughs> They're not associated with us. Stop trying to paint them as us. And then that's the thing, how the media jumps on. They're like, these people are white supremacists. These people are burning businesses, right? Oh, these well, people there brought was, all these guns. Not true. There was somebody in chat here yesterday that was defending all of this and saying that the, that we here in the United States should shut up because they're, it's not um, actually peaceful and that they've, mm -hmm. they've got their, their trucks parked and they're blocking things and they're honking their horns and it's causing mayhem and stuff. But it's like, where's the evidence of that? Like, just show us the evidence. Oh, I mean, I, what, I, please share it with me. You know, I'm not afraid yeah. to when facts, we, we will look when at facts anything. present themselves, when facts present themselves, we cover it here on the show. So if you are in that area and you've got video of these actual people who are tied to these protests, who are, who are causing mayhem, hurting other people, please share it with us. And again, we'll look at it through that, that visage, which is, is this one person, one bad apple ru ruining a bunch, right? Or is it thousands of these protests doing this? Yeah, because like whenever I, whenever I'm doing like any kind of like if you guys want to like do investigating in the right way, what you do is you you look up the counter argument and you look up the argument. You look up both and you watch the videos and you just kind of see, like I say, like where the information leads you. And a lot of times it's like it will it will lead you in the right way. And then you start to figure out things about the, the opposing side. And then it's like, OK, and then you end up with more information on one side, which should give you kind of an idea of, of which side is is right. And when you've got no counter videos, no counter narrative that you can see, then chances are that's it's not real. And I've right. not seen anything violent. And they did initially say that there were some people that showed up with some some Nazi flags or whatever, and they got them out of there just as soon as they could because that was not representative of the movement. And then that starts to look like, hey, that must have been planted. And now they're going to try this potentially with the guns, planning that. So it's like the only way they can make this non-peaceful from what we're seeing is by planting evidence or or the media spinning things that aren't true. Right. Grim says, I think that person we were referring to yesterday was pointing out that the convoy was clogging up the roadways, not necessarily that they were terrorizing. Yeah, I saw that in the chat yesterday too. And, and maybe, and, and they certainly are, right? We know that they're blocking the roadways. That's the point, right? It's a blockade. So that's exactly what they're doing, right? So but they're yes. not blocking emergency stuff, though, to be clear. Like, right, exactly. We talked about the issue. Ambulances yeah. get through and all that. Yeah, yeah exactly. and they're out there helping the homeless. So they're, what, the, what they're, people are upset about is that they're blocking trade, and people are equating that to a bad thing. But right. if, if, if they're stopping trade, then that's the only way you can get these freaking people to listen is by affecting their money. If their money's affected, they're going to listen a bit more. And so that's why they're trying to get more you know, rough with these people is because they're affecting the money now. Right. And, you know, look, here on the show, as, as someone just said in the chat, if these people were rich, uh, rich people, right, they would be out there protecting these people 100%, right? Mm -hmm. You'd be supporting them. And so what we, you know, what we do on the show, I think we on this show are distrustful of our government. And I don't media. trust our government for, and David doesn't trust our government for repeatedly lying to us keeping information from us, stoking fear for purposes of control and surveillance. Again, if I told you that this would have happened four years ago, like you Clayton, you would have said, Clayton, you're a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. There's no way the government is going to arrest people for holding peaceful protests, see their bank accounts seized, being labeled as terrorists, being guns being planted in, at their feet in order to discredit their movement. And yet here we are. And yet here we are. There's a firm I was reading about out of Israel, too. Where there's like troubling news out of Israel where there are groups that are literally able to plant evidence on your phone. Think about that, right? We want to seize people's phones so we can find out what they've been up to. But imagine if you, well, how did that get on my phone? I didn't put that on my phone. So you, you know, these stories about people being arrested. Oh, we found, we found all kinds of nefarious things on their phone. Oh, you did, did you? Interesting. Like, you know, you can call it conspiracy theorists now, cons cons conspiracy theories now, but when you see the news reports about this specifically in coming out of Israel and hearing from this former sniper who worked in the government and was Justin Trudeau's bodyguard, and, and he's like, look, well, I'm just warning you, like, this is these things were stolen. We've heard from law enforcement sources telling us what they're about to do with this stuff. They're giving us a heads up on this. So we're going to put it out there in front of you. And if this starts happening, you'll know the truth. So good for well, them for the, being out in front on this. 
And the thing is, too, it's like people don't remember history. Like you remember when Operation Bay of Pigs and the Gulf of Tonkin and um, uh, Operation Paperclip. Like those were all conspiracy theories by complete nut jobs that then would come to, to fruition and end up being true. And it's like, how can people still look at when, when they have these, these conspiracy theories that come out that people still just downplay these things, knowing the history of like our entire, our entire history is filled with conspiracy theories that became fact. I mean, think about it, right? Operation Paperclip, you bring up Operation Paperclip. That was like considered a conspiracy theory, right? Now we know it was true, right? Right. Annie Jacobson, who's an excellent journalist, by the way, She's written extensively about Area 51. She's an amazing journalist. I've interviewed her. She has a new book out that came out just a few months ago on Operation Paperclip. I highly recommend you all read it. The CIA secret program to bring Nazi scientists to America. It's exactly what happened. Yeah, it's like, why do all these NASA employees have German accents? <laughs> right. It's so interesting. I mean, they bring them to, they bring them to America to basically, I mean, she's got other books too. I mean, Area 51. Um, this was a great, I mean, she talks about the secret military base. She interviews pe generals. She interviews members of the military who worked at the base, the secret programs there. She's an amazing journalist. I mean, her books, her books, by the way, like are this thick. I'm going to bring up some of the ones from downstairs. She's got, she, she won a Pulitzer Prize or she was a finalist for a Pulitzer Prize on the Pentagon and the DARPA project. This woman knows her stuff. But yeah, well, the, and this is these like conspiracy the of theories are like flown like, oh, it's a conspiracy theory until it's true. Right. And it's like, this is the epitome of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Like, right. you know, the whole Bushes thing, but like they fooled us how many times before they fool us and we just don't allow, like, for instance, that reporter the other day about the Russian narrative, you mm -hmm. know, like really pushing, um, I, I never can remember that statement guy's name, but uh, Ken Price. Yeah, Ken Price, really pushing Ken Price because their narratives never turn out. Like, it's like, start, make them have to start proving things. And you guys should never believe what they say. Look at what they're doing. There, there's there's usually more evidence that you can find uh, in the contrary of what they're saying. Or or if not, at least make them prove something before we all get on board with, you know, attacking somebody like Russia. Right, right. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that now. Let's talk about war. Let's Let's talk about these this uh, de-escalation here. Hold on one second here. Pull this up because that's what we're heading for next, right? This is the this is the next stage in all of this. Um, so let's talk about this de-escalation that's that's apparently happening in Russia. Now, to listen to the mainstream media and the the, the Biden administration, you would have con been convinced over the past few days, right, that Russia was about to invade Ukraine. And that NATO would be dragged into an endless war. Well, you would be forgiven because you could say, hey, you know what? I saw this on CNN or I saw this uh, on, on MSNBC or I read Time magazine, whatever. Right. President Biden said the threat was real. Right. That an invasion is going to happen. You know, you could have been listening to the American intelligence operatives sources that were telling, you know, mainstream media. Right. We, we have intelligence sources from inside the CIA inside the Pentagon that are telling us that this is going to happen, that there's going to be an invasion. Remember this? We showed this to you yesterday. Like this was literally what was being told and said. Russia set to invade Ukraine at 1 a.m. tomorrow with massive missile blitz and 200,000 troops. Well, and remember, when, remember that little clip of uh, Mike P Pompeo saying, yeah, we lie. The CIA lies. That's, it's, that's what we do. And it's like we really think that Th that any of this is truth like like how can we ever trust the cia in the intelligence world because they they've lied us into how many wars oh yeah i mean that's exactly what pompeo said right he said that's what we do you know when we're in the cia when we're in the nsa that's what we do we're, we have training programs on how to lie to the american people and, and not only that about it. yeah that like it's a, and the whole crowd laughed as well and it's like they they specifically go into these countries and try to provoke war and don't say anything. They send these shadow little puppets in there and they're like, okay, what can we do to provoke the government? Like they go in there and they they start these things and then they tell us the narrative over here of the other side, like what they're doing while they're over there doing nefarious things behind our back, completely paid for by us. Mm -hmm. Don't have to say a word because it's all secret. Like, oh, no, we can't tell you. It's all secret. By the way, you as taxpayers pay for this crap, right? Yeah. You're paying for this, right? Russia set to invade Ukraine at 1 a.m. tomorrow with massive missile blitz. Like your tax dollars are funding this propaganda. 
right? Of course, this didn't happen, right? Ru Russia did not invade Ukraine, and Russia called our bluff on this whole thing. Look, I love these reporters, like this ABC reporter with his little helmet on. He's on the front lines covering it, the rising tensions on the front lines, you know? I'm, a, I'm an embedded war reporter, and I'm here to give you the truth. As we reported yesterday here on the show, we have not... We have not been falling for that mainstream media BS that suggests that Russia is the aggressor here. We reported that Russia did, yes, move large number of troops into personnel carriers and on trains back home to their home territories. Wall Street reacted yesterday with jubilance, putting up fantastic numbers. It looks like Russia was de-escalating this crisis, right? But don't tell that to the Biden administration or NATO or the Western mainstream media because to listen to any of them, you would think that this de-escalation is fake and that the threat is very real. Please keep sending us your money here at NATO because we need your money, right? We need your we need your weapons. We need your military uh, bravado. We need your troops. Heck, even Canada just donated bill, uh, millions of dollars and weapons to NATO just so to, in, in Ukraine to make sure to protect themselves against the Russian bear. So this morning, the Biden administration is going along again with this NATO allies are saying we're not seeing a de-escalation. They're saying we don't see a de-escalation. We don't see it. In fact, we think they're building up again. We think they're ready to invade again. And even if they are, let's say they are. Worst case scenario, let's say Russia is ready to invade. Uh, why is that any of our business? Like, <laughs> right, why do we... Yeah, why is it further, our why business? Why is that any of our business? We have enough yeah. problems at home. Why, exactly. Okay. Like... The problem is the reason it's our business is because NATO is ours. I mean, make no mistake about it. NATO is just an extension of the United States. It gets us off the hook in saying that, oh, oh you, it's, it's a NATO base. That's not a United States base. That's a NATO base. NATO is just funded by the United States. It's just an extension of, what, you think Norway? You think Norway is leading the charge here? No, no, no. It's us. We run the show. Forget the fact that we have allies in NATO. It's us. We do the funding. You know, hey, remember President Trump got slammed for wanting to readjust the amount the United States was funding NATO? He was slammed by Congress. Like, how dare you? How dare you? This is our safety. How are we going to stand up against Russia and China? Hey, maybe we don't fund the whole thing. If, you know, after all, we're not supposed, this is supposed to be a whole equal partnership here among NATO allies. Why is the United States funding 70% of it? Just asking. I'm just asking for a friend. So what is the well, truth here in all of this? And if we didn't own NATO, imagine if we tried to do the things we're doing. We probably wouldn't get away with it. I mean, that's the, the only reason, like, these allies <laughs> yeah, back us point, all the yeah. time and we're like, hey, we're going in with, England's coming in with us. Well, that's because we're giving them a ton of money. Right. Yeah, we're footing the bill for it. You can wrap it under uh, guise of NATO, right? That's how you can do it. So what is the truth in all of this? You know, remember, though, at the heart of this, Russia is a sovereign country with its own borders and its own freedom to move its own troops around however the hell it wants within its own borders. We do we military have, we exercises have, all the damn time in the United States. We have weapons pointed at them since uh, uh, World War II. Yeah, since 1953 or whatever it is, when we had intercontinental ballistic missiles pointed at them. You know, they can do whatever they want inside their own borders, right? Um, and we were told that they were going to be uh, invading, right? They have no, But Russia is telling us they have no intention of invading Ukraine and that these are simple military exercises, but we're not listening. So what is the truth here? Well, we actually listen well, at least to they the don't permanent... Have, at least they don't have somebody out here saying that the, the, the if we don't do anything, the response is going to come in the shape of a mushroom cloud or whatever it was that... Uh, um, the, the the Condoleezza Rice was saying, you know, the mushroom cloud thing. They haven't oh, come up with that now. kind of little, yeah, that kind of little cliche, that saying yet to well, get yeah, us Colin all on Powell. board. Colin yeah. Powell was holding up a little vial of, you know, little vial of whatever to say that weapons of mass destruction were there, and you know, we need to we need to follow we need to follow the, this thread wherever it goes. So, what is the truth here? Well, let's listen to the permanent representative of Russia to the United Nations, Dmitry Polyansky. Now, he did an interview with Aaron Maté, by the way, who's an excellent journalist. And he says, all of these stories that are coming from these Western media sources are totally false. Oh, and by the way, he says, we told our Western friends months ago that we were going to be conducting these routine military exercises as part of our normal every six month military exercise program. Which, by the way, just if you say, oh, that's that's hogwash. Well, that's exactly what NATO does on a regular basis at Russia's doorstep. <laughs> 
I mean, I know. I have friends in the military who are part of these NATO exercises, literally flying, looking at Russia via Norway. I mean, they're literally running these NATO exercises on Russia's doorstep regularly. NATO is doing... Con all of these guys get together, they go off the coast of Portugal, and they run all these exercises, these military exercises. We do exercises. the same thing to China. We do them with, yeah, we do them with China, the South China Sea. We do, you know, nuclear submarine drills constantly. So Russia said they were doing the same thing, and they warned us. They said, hey, in a few months, we're going to be doing these. Here's on the calendar when we're going to do it. So listen to Dimitri talk about this Western disinformation campaign striking and it uh, just confirms our uh, assumption that we are living in a post-truth world where it's not important what's happening but it is very important how it is being presented so everybody is speaking about alleged uh, russian plans to attack uh, some people even say that we should be sanctioned for these alleged plans to attack and i'm not i will not be surprised if these sanctions will take place actually will be introduced because this goes in the logic of our western partners but nobody uh, nobody, very few people really uh, give them uh, give uh, give themselves the possibility uh, to analyze it and to understand who is really threatening whom. So the fact that we have a number of troops, and by the way, we never confirmed the figure of 100,000. It came out from some American sources, and uh, it's very questionable. But okay, some number of troops. Yes, we have them at the border. Uh, but not exactly at the border ready to attack. They are in the places when they, where they usually are. Uh, the numbers can vary. It happened before. It may happen in the future because this is our sovereign territory and these, these are our troops. So we have the right to do so. And uh, what uh, if uh, the uh, joint uh, training with uh, Belarus uh, is, is mentioned, and this is the case now, uh, I can tell you that uh, these trainings take place from time to time, several times a year. And this one exactly uh, was not a surprise. Uh, we notified about it uh, several months ago. So it is a planned exercise of our joint uh, allied forces of Russia and Belarus. Nothing extraordinary. I remember the tweet of Aaron where he also uh, mentioned several several Google searches uh, with a uh, number of Russian troops uh, on, on the Ukrainian border, which are very much similar to, to what is now being promoted in the media. And there was no fuss about it at that time. So it happened before. Again, we are not new to this kind of allegation. But of course, the scope of this allegation now is something re remarkable. It has never... Yeah, it's remarkable, right? Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that America's media companies can't be trusted? You mean to tell me that the same media companies in the United States they get their talking points directly from the intelligence agencies and political officials. Those people can't be trusted. I'm shocked. I'm shocked to see that gambling is going on inside of this establishment. I mean, do you think that this sounds like a conspiracy theory? Well, some amazing reporting by Max Blumenthal previously uncovered documents that showed that Reuters, the news agency, the Thomson Reuters news agency, and the BBC were involved in covert United Kingdom program to weaken Russia's state influence by releasing propaganda in the press. Here it is. You remember when Reuters used to mean something? <laughs> yeah, I do. Back in the day. Reuters, BBC, and Bellingcat participated in covert UK foreign office funded programs to weaken Russia, leaked documents reveal. Yeah. So what they were doing was training, Reuters training uh, Russian journalists overseen by Reuters in the British Foreign Office such to produce a an attitude and change in the participants promoting a positive uh, perception of the United Kingdom. They promoted regime change inside of Russia, trying to undermine the government's Russian government across Eastern Europe and into Asia. So last year we learned that Reuters was involved in a propaganda campaign against Russia. And then here today, just a few hours ago, here today is the front cover of Reuters. Okay, remember, this is the new news agency you can trust. NATO says Russia still adding troops to Ukraine buildup. Thank you, Reuters. And here's an excerpt at the start of two days of talks among NATO and defense ministers. NATO Secretary General Jans Stoltenberg appeared unconvinced that the threat of a Russian invasion of Ukraine had lessened and voiced guarded hopes for democracy. He said, quote, we have not seen any withdrawal of Russian forces. And of course, that contradicts the message of diplomatic efforts, Stoltenberg said. What we see is that they have increased the number of troops, 
and more troops are on their way. So, so far, no de-escalation. Now, NATO is considering new steps to deter Russia on its eastern flank, according to reports, according to Reuters, on its eastern flank. So they're going to consider adding additional troops over there now. The United States just announced that it's sending 3,000 additional troops to Poland this morning, in addition to the thousands that have already been sent to the region without congressional approval, <laughs> right? No, you're just going to send American troops? For what reason? They've already been sent to Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, and Slovakia. Just keep sending troops. Meanwhile, the Russians say, hey, these are part of normal military exercises. And where do you get these numbers of 150,000 troops? Like, it's like you got it, somebody sitting there counting them. <laughs> right. One, two, uh, three, four. four. Oh, darp your head down. No, I think I counted him twice. Wait, wait. Like the, one, two. <laughs> they got they hired the count from Sesame Street. Yeah. Von, one, one Russian two. soldier. Ah, 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 ah. But it's amazing to read these articles because, like, in one article, it's 105,000 troops. And then another article, it's 150,000 troops. And then literally another article a few minutes later, it's, oh, there's 200,000 troops there. Yeah, it's like, oh. Wow, they're like rabbits over there in Russia. Yeah, just pops around. Like, and he's like, oh, he's like, where do they, he goes, where do they even get this number from? Dimitri's like, where do they get this number from? We never, he's like, I don't even know that there's that many troops. He's like, but that's what the, that's what the Western media is saying. Okay. Well, it's not like if you're a military operation, it's not like they're going to say, on even on the, the Russian media, if it was some kind of covert op, yeah, we're sending 200,000 troops over right. to the Ukraine border just to just to intimidate them a little bit. I mean, and you I mean, and you hear from Vladimir Putin, right? See, if you talk about what Vladimir Putin says, then you're some sort of a Russia apologist, right? But look, I've been around the block too long as a journalist and worked in the, in the belly of the mainstream media. I know how these things work. When you have on your air coming up, uh, coming up next now, we're gonna we're gonna hear from a uh, former CIA analyst, da 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 da, who's gonna talk about the escalating crisis in Russia and the Ukraine, you know. And then you that get then you have a general on, right? Then they put a general on TV, like this general who's so, now on the dole and on the on the payroll, right? So just out of curiosity, I googled how many troops does Russia have total. And according to this article, I'd have to look into it more, but it's estimating around 850,000 troops total. Now, I don't know if that's true again, but if that's true and they have 200,000 of them on the Ukraine border, that would make zero sense. Well, I don't exactly right. And it also makes zero sense because as Dimitri pointed out, he's like, we're not even at the border. We're, we're like, we're in the normal areas where we normally conduct exercises. And by the way, we've done these before and there's been no kerfluffle about it. No one's cared at all that we've done these before. But now suddenly there's concern about it. But the Biden administration this morning, I mean, all you need to do is just go to, you know, go to Google and look at the top stories on on this de-escalation process. And, you know, look at, I mean, NATO says, I mean, look at this. NATO says Russian troop buildup near Ukraine continues. That's the USA Today. Despite yeah, really their claims. You can really <laughs> believe that. Despite them telling us that they're not doing that, despite lack of evidence, they're still doing it. USA Today is one of the worst rags. Absolutely. You know, I terrible. think it's funny. Um, uh, I, Richard Blackstone in here is saying Biden is giddy about having his own war. And it's like, that's true. Like, think about it. Biden's backed all these wars all this time. And he's like, finally, finally, I get to have my own war. Right. I've always had to back these other ones from other presidents. Now I get yeah. my own war. Got to stop this Putin aggression. But we already know that they've been working the Pentagon. We already know that the CIA has been actively working to foist propaganda throughout Asia and throughout rest of Europe to, to, to force regime change in, in Russia, um, to train journalists. I mean, we, again, I come back to the story that there are these leaked documents that show that Reuters, the BBC, do you think, by the way, let me just ask you guys in the chat room, do you think that this just ends with Reuters and the BBC? <laughs> no. no, this is just the tip of the iceberg, according to the reporting. No way that this is, that that's it. Give me a break. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, do you remember, like, I remember a time when you would see that Reuters logo or the Associated Press, and that actually meant something. Like, you'd see that, and you could pretty much be like, okay, these are, this is where real news is coming from. This is where most news companies get their news. They they source uh, Associated Press and Reuters. Reuters. 
Yeah. And now it's like now what? That's been caught. Who did Bezos buy it or something? Like what happened? Yeah. So now when you see when you're reading your local newspaper and you see that it's not from your local reporter, but it's from Reuters or it's from Associated Press. I mean, think about that for a second. And my gosh, that you have one reporter from the Associated Press who, you know, gets laughed at by the Pentagon when he asks tough questions or the State Department when he asks tough questions about this media information. Like we're about to see a movie, a film that's created by the Russians that show that Ukraine is is killing Russian soldiers and it, that's the impetus for for invasion. Like this is the crap that we're being told to believe. Like fool me once, my God, guys. I mean, uh, we've got more news to get to here on the show. We're going to talk about these vaccines and kids, some troubling data that's coming out about that. We're also going to talk about this Afghanistan money. These are two very important stories. Please stick around for that. Uh, but first, I want to quickly tell you about our friends over at Moomoo. If you want to get up to $7,000 in free stocks, you can do so just by opening a Moomoo account today and get a free AMC stock. Now, when you sign up, you get a few free stocks. And then if you make a deposit, you get you get those additional stocks all the way up to $7,000. You can click on, you can get your free stocks right there. But all you need to do is go to morninginvest.com slash Moomoo. They make it very easy to learn how to trade, um, to start start investing today. Pick a few stocks that you want to hold long term, um, things that companies that you believe in, things that you know you want to put a little money into to protect against this uh, sort of crazy, crazy government printing of U.S. currency. Go over and check them out today. Go to morninginvest.com slash moomoo today to sign up and to get up to $7,000 in free stock. You have to use that link morninginvest.com slash moomoo to check them out. They've got lots of great news uh, items inside of their website, as well as level two data, which lets you also uh, see what's happening with trades. Uh, normally other companies charge for level two data, but moomoo is free for that. So open your account for free and get some free stocks just for opening your account. All right. Keep your chats coming. I'd like to see everyone in the chat room today. Madeline is here. Joanne Morgan is here. Ty Starfighter is here. Becky Medvets. Good to see all of you. Michelle Brown. Tina Standerfer is here. Good to see all of you. Well, we need to talk about myocarditis. Once again, the reason we need to talk about it here on the show is because the big pharma funded mainstream news networks in the United States will not cover this story. Now, when we learn that Moderna, Pfizer, and others spend millions of dollars in advertisements with the major media networks in the United States, it's no wonder that we see little or no coverage of troubling stories as it relates to vaccines, Sp specifically the myocarditis story. Instead, we have to go to Israel, where the Israeli Times and Israeli newspapers are covering a major medical story from the United States that was just published, by the way, in the Journal of the American Medical Association in the United States. Now, I should point out, among the authors in the study are CDC members. Okay, let me repeat that. Authors involved in this study are from the Centers for Disease Control. Okay, among other major health institutions like Emory University, Vanderbilt University, highly prestigious universities, by the way. Okay, and the CDC. But again, just reminding you of that. Just put that in your site. This isn't like some some fringe report. Okay, this was a this is a very credible report. Now here is the headline this morning from this Israeli paper on what we're seeing. New study: 133x risk of myocarditis after COVID vaccination. Comparisons with myocarditis rates following infection now irrelevant, as vaccination no longer prevents infection. That's the Israeli newspaper covering the story. So the report shows that the risk of myocarditis or inflammation of the heart is 133 times greater than after getting the mRNA COVID vaccine. The risk is there across multiple age and sex strata, according to the study, but it's greater in adolescent boys. And shouldn't we know about this? My question is to you, when you watch television and you see advertisements for drugs, at the end of those commercials, don't they always say, may cause, uh, you know, urinary tract infection, may cause this, may cause that, may cause death, may cause this. Anyone can just waltz into a pharmacy and get, get a COVID vaccine, and they're not given any warning about it? They're not issued any warnings about this? Why? 
Well, and here's something that's crazy. The so the guy that uh, Joe Rogan had on that caused all this controversy about misinformation was a heart specialist and one of the uh, is actually the most um, uh, published doctor in the heart field, um, Doctor Peter McCullough. And he has been saying this all along. And he was saying that 13% of kids will get it. 80% of those kids end up in the hospital. Uh, there's been a, a study in Alberta that, a while ago from a very credible um, a doctor in there that was saying it's for uh, Pfizer, it's one in uh, 3,000 kids. Um, and usually male and one in seven th- with with Pfizer and one in seven thousand with Moderna. So they have known this for a long time. It's just now coming out. And these people were painted as conspiracy theorists and anti-vax and all the other stuff for trying to get us this exact information that now is going to come is going to become mainstream. Well, AA in our chat says the vaccination is not supposed to prevent COVID. It's supposed to help fight it when you get it. Okay, now that's not what we were told. That's not what we were told. Remember. You want to go back and just look at the countless, countless members of the administration and were out there telling us and medic members of the, the inner circle were telling us absolutely get this because it's going to prevent the spread, right? Well, AA is the one I was having the conversation with yesterday about the, the convoy. So they seem to be an establishment narrative believer. So, hey, but I love AA. I love let's I want AA. I'm glad you're in our chat watching the show today because that means you're opening up your mind here all i'm doing is providing facts for you okay yeah because there's no... always a, there's always another narrative like that you can't just dump, and dump, i don't have an agenda like, by the way I, right. I run a multi-million dollar business i don't have to do this show at all i don't have to do this show at all okay i don't have to do this i don't make any money from big pharma i don't make any money from moderna i don't i don't at all so I love I you know I love the news and I love being able to disseminate things because I know how the belly of the beast works. I worked in the mainstream media. I was a journalist. Okay, I understand how this operation the mainstream media works. So the fact that you're here watching this show AA is awesome and I hope that you'll continue to be a, a great member of our audience because you know maybe you won't agree with everything you hear that's fine but I encourage you to go and do your own due diligence on it. Go read about it yourself. Well, how many Go people have we it. seen over the years in this chat of saying, I, I stopped watching the mainstream media because you start to see the other side of things. And then once you start to look into it, you 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 see more. Right. So when you watch, exactly. So I love that you're watching this show because if you start watching your six o'clock news tonight, you're not going to see coverage of this. You're not going to see coverage of any, you're going to, all you're going to see is the headline tonight on your six o'clock news will likely be Russia, NATO says Russia not de-escalating, you know. The, get ready for war. Like that's going to be the headline, right? It's not, it, or it, it, it's going to be it, it's going to be a total lie to you. Mostly, that's usually how it is. So this condition, this this report out of Israel that's based on the JAMA article, which is the Journal of the American Medical Association, that the condition is serious enough for hospitalization. Eighty-seven percent of those that were hospitalized were discharged with the resolution of symptoms by the time they were discharged, which is good news, right? Eighty-seven percent. Okay, they had myocarditis, they were treated, and then they were able to successfully be treated and go home. Good news there, right? Facts are facts. We should also point out that this paper, this journal article, this journal of the American Medical Association study, does not claim that the vaccine causes myocarditis. It does not go that far, but it does show a damn high correlation. And then it's sort of incumbent upon you to decide, okay, they just got a vaccination. Suddenly they got myocarditis. Now the article's not saying <laughs> that there is a connection, but what else happened in that interim period? Well, Peter and McCullough. like Peter, Peter McCullough is saying, like, it, it depends on like, yes, some of them are being, um, you know, discharged or whatever, but he said that is something that will permanently affect their heart in, or, in many cases. Or worse, or worse, yeah. right? So Peter McCullough points out in a tweet, this morning, two fatal cases of myocarditis in teenage boys a few days after a second dose found dead at their home with a chance at res- with uh, without a chance of resuscitation. Clear cut findings on the autopsy, and here he put he actually prints the autopsy report. He said, "I testified in the U.S. Senate on January 24th that one case of this is too many. Parents and kids should know more about that deaths will happen." And that's all I'm saying here on this show is knowledge is power. 
And if we can sit there every night and watch commercial after commercial after commercial from all of these big pharma companies, side effects may include, you know, a shrunken head, uh, you know, may include death, may include a stroke. I mean, the list, the list of sh the list of crap that they, they talk about is frightening in may and cause intestinal bleeding may and cause all of that stuff is well, listed there asked, on those commercials. Why can we not hear about it with this? We should know I this. asked Jennifer. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that is the stuff that these doctors on Joe Rogan were saying that they're getting attacked for. And this is the whole reason we're having this conversation. I asked Jennifer when she got back from getting hers, I was like, so did they warn you of like the, the potential of any side effects like the myocarditis or the, the, how the it's affecting the women's reproductive systems and stuff like that? Like, did, was there any mention of that stuff? No. Oh. No. And by the way, when we covered that story here last year on this show, when I covered that story, I got demonetized. YouTube blocked me. Okay. When I, when I covered the story that was coming out and no one, mainstream media was not covering the story about women's reproductive issues. And as it relates to menstrual, menstrual cycles being affected, do you know how many emails I got from viewers that said, thank you for covering the story. My wife has been suffering from this and we didn't know what it was. We didn't know what was going on. And we now are, we now have information we can go to our doctor because now they're able to find other Facebook groups where other women had the same experience as a result of it. My but masseuse no had it. Not allowed to talk about it. Who, who had it? My masseuse. Like she started talking about it. Like she said she had, had gotten the, the second one and she started talking and I asked her, I said, anything strange? And she's like, well, yeah, she goes, she goes, but that's not part of that is I was like, well, that is potential. I was like, we did a story on that and she had no idea. She did. She made that connection while I was there. Yeah, I, I've heard from a lot of women who wrote me on Twitter, who wrote emails to me saying, I didn't know what was going on. I thought I was going crazy, but my menstrual cycle has been totally affected by this. Well, you know, you know, what's really funny, too, is like last week when you guys were gone and I did the members only <clears throat> uh, stream, there was a huge percentage of people. And I and I actually made note of it. I was like, holy cow, I can't believe how many of you are saying they had adverse reactions from from the, the jab. And I was like, how many, so how many people have, and I asked it, and there were so many people saying I did, I did, I did. And I was just like blown away because if you think about like the percentage of people that, that that's potentially happening to, but you can't talk about it, the, mm -hmm. there's a clause in all of the paperwork for the pharmaceutical companies that they're not responsible for any side effects whatsoever. So you cannot sue them. They are there. You're not their responsibility. So you have to try to fight to get any kind of help with it whatsoever uh, and insurance companies aren't, you know, say that they're not going to put it and say that it was the vaccine that did it. They've been telling people, no, you've just got anxiety. No, you're just having heart palpitations. That's something else that came on from some other reason. Right. So, you know, this has been going on for, you know, a long time. Yeah. You're just crazy. You're just crazy. You know, yeah. you just, you don't, you got to believe the crazy mainstream conspiracy media. Conspiracy theorists. You just, you got to listen to Matt Damon, you know, that's who you got to believe, right? Yeah, Matt Damon. I mean, also of note, Moderna COVID vaccine recipients have a higher risk, according to the reports. I can't believe they actually published this. Moderna COVID vaccine recipients have a higher risk of heart inflammation than Pfizer. So that's not good news for Pfizer. So what do we do with this information, right? Well, the study's authors say that adolescents, young adults should have their progress monitored for heart related incidents after they get vaccinated. Should be watched. Right? Shouldn't just be sent home willy nilly. Here, anyone can come in and grab these things. Just come in like candy. Just come in like candy and get these things. Also, given that the vaccine does not prevent COVID, but has been shown to lessen its severity, we know that to be the truth. Each person then should go and talk with their own doctor about this and say, hey, I'm, you know, I, I've, I've read the stories and reports about myocarditis. And it, by the way, if your doctor hasn't read it or has been kept from reading it, I'll have a link to the Journal of American Medical Association study today. We covered it in the newsletter today, but it's right there from the JAMA Medical, and it's right from the CDC. So this is not misinformation or disinformation or any of that crap. This comes right from the CDC and these esteemed universities. And what it well, says is that they can't draw a connect. They they're, they're, it didn't come right out and say it that it's that that the vaccine is causing this, but you do the homework. I mean, do you want to take that chance, I guess? And if you do want to take that chance, great. Maybe you've got a comorbidity or maybe you are, you know, concerned about your health and you're a teenager or whatever, or you, I don't, whatever it happens to be. 
make sure you're talking with a doctor about this. And certainly if you have like some sort of a heart condition before, I mean, look at like what Peter McCullough is talking about here with this tweet, right? And he links to the autopsy results. The results of the autopsies. Two teenage well, and, boys who are found dead in their homes because of it. And, and unfortunately, like this country does not rec recognize natural immunity. So with all of these passports and everything that they were requiring, they weren't letting people. They, they actually made it so doctors could not write notes for people to give you some kind of. So if you wanted to go out in New York City or somewhere where they had these passes, doctors couldn't say, hey, you can't get it because of this. No, everybody had to get it, period, regardless of your medical history, regardless of any um, comorbidities that you had, they were saying, no, it's safe for everybody. Everybody needs to just shut up and get it. Kids need to shut up and get it. Doesn't matter age, doesn't matter any of that stuff. All that went out the window. And all these doctors are saying, no, this is not, this is not safe. You cannot do this. Right. Yeah. And we talked about it yesterday here on the show, how you had certain doctors who are, they're being chastised. Like they don't want to write those, um, what is it called? A medical, uh, you can yeah. go for a religious exemption or a medical exemption, right? Yeah. They don't want to do that because they're afraid that they'll they'll basically lose their job. They'll be ostracized as a doctor. They're being told by, you know, not to do that. Like if someone says, hey, I, 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 I've had an inflamed heart problem when I was younger. Is it okay for me to get that? Maybe I have a medical exemption. I shouldn't get this vaccine. The doctors are like, eh, I'm just not going to write that thing because I'm just, I, I can't do it. I'm just going to be going to be chastised for it i'm going to lose my job because of it that well and that's like some happen. some of these people asking doctors to to actually say that i should get the vaccine you know like write me a prescription or tell me that i need to get the vaccine no 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 we can't do that you just just go to this place and get it you know yeah just go down here like like a candy shop and just get it with no you know like i mean people can just I, that's what I, I can't wrap my head around is that we can just in the united states it's such a for-profit system right that We'd rather put profits over people's health. That's that's the American medical establishment, right? Profits over people's health. That's it. And Brandy I, you know, I Kenny, some, what's that? I was gonna say the Brandy Kenny in the chat just sent a ten dollars super chat. Two people I work with that have young siblings that recently ended up in the hospital with myocarditis. One person dropped in the parking lot just minutes after, and they both ended up in comas. Wow. Wow. Now we can't talk about it, Brandy. Right. Can't talk about it. You're a, you're then we're, we're going to say you're an anti-vaxxer. Had, to, had to totally be under unrelated, had to be unrelated, totally unrelated. Right. I mean, that's the problem with this study. And I, I, I appreciate it. It's facts. Facts are facts. Right. And as Dr. John Campbell went through the study, he said, look, they don't come right out and say it. They're not saying that there's direct connection between getting it and it causing myocarditis. But what do you I mean, if you're Sherlock Holmes, Right. One minute you go in and get the vaccine and the next minute you drop and fall into a coma in the parking lot after getting the vaccine. Put two and two together. Or like the comedian, the woman the other day, the famous, you know, the comedian now she was on stage and, and doing a stand up routine and she had just gotten her booster shot and she collapsed on stage. And she says, I'm not getting a fourth shot now. I was planning on getting it. I'm not going well, four. Can you imagine? First of all, four shots. Holy smokes. You want that in your body? Well, and, and, and the thing is, that's a, that uh, shot has a synthetic spike in it, and that spike can stay in your body for up to 15 months. Well, every time you get that, you're extending that and adding more to it. It like completely just like bombards your body with spike, with that Proteins, synthetic, yeah. synthetic spike. And your heart or your body is not made to fight synthetic things. No, I, you know, I got an alert on my watch or on my, uh, my text from... You know, hey, my COVID passport or whatever it is, my COVID uh, thing, you know, after 270 days, like it expires. So my like digital COVID passport, and I don't know what I'm not, I'm not getting another one. So I don't know what I felt like texting it back, but it was like a generic text number that sent to me. I felt like texting it back and like, okay, that one's expired. Send me a new one. <laughs> I'm not going to getting it. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm sorry, but if I can't go into a friggin' restaurant, like, you know, that's too bad. I'll eat at home then. You know, if I can't, that's, it's ridiculous. Disney World announcing today that it's opening up so that it can, you, you can go there without wearing a mask if you're vaccinated, which again is one of those stupid protocols, like the same thing that I made fun of California for. You can go in and indoors in a mall and indoors without a mask in California only if you're vaccinated. What's the science behind that? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. What is the science behind that? We know that it doesn't matter even if you are vaccinated that you still can spread this thing. So what the hell well, is the like, difference? 
every YouTube video, every Facebook video, everything that's out there, every tweet you make that talks about anything, they point to two resources that you're supposed to. They, it was the WHO. They kind of removed that. Then it was the CDC. And, and and when the CDC changes their guidelines on masks and say, yeah, we've, we realize now the cloth masks don't work, but they're still saying that you have to wear them. And these Facebook and Google and all them are still pointing you to that information. And if you talk about it, you can get banned from your YouTube channel. Like you can be completely suspended off of YouTube, even though the science now from the source that they cite saying that we need to go to says different. Right. Well, you know, and here's here's a you know television presenter who is pushing uh, pushing for full vaccinations, who just got vaccinated pushing for full vaccinations, then she's on the air and just collapses right after uh, talking about it. Another happy vaccinated. <laughs> just got, I just got vaccinated. Jesus, I want, Jesus everyone must should love go her the there. most too. Everyone should go out and get vaccinated. Every, you know, everyone should go out and get it, right? You should all, you should all go out and get it. I'm just, I just want to say like, Everyone should go and get it. Everyone should go get ac- mandatory vaccinations. It should be vital that we get them. We should absolutely do this. See, I just I just got my third dose. I just got I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. Totally fine. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see <laughs> like you know, and, and with all this, this is this is exactly why when I when knowing all this information, you know that they have to know this at the White House. You know they have to know this data there's no way that they don't and so that's why i was like there's no way that biden was actually given a booster live on tv like i just don't think that they would have actually given him that live when they have all this data i'm not saying that they didn't i'm not saying that i'm just saying would that make sense if they have this data that they would do that to uh what 80 how old is biden uh yeah i don't know 79 or 80 i think you just turned yeah 80? that they would do that live on live on tv in front of press no Here's another journalist, a Brazilian journalist, who was just talking about, you know, just had uh, just had my third vaccine, just got my third vaccine, and it collapses on the air, uh, the camera operator. You know. But he's really struggling to keep that camera up. It's the thing. I'm, you know, I'm saying, like, a- anecdotal, for sure, right? Couple of cases. But this is, again, why we need information. So what if someone has a pre-existing condition? Someone is concerned about a heart condition. So there's no disclaimers. There's nothing about it. You're not allowed to ask about it. If you do, you get shut down on mainstream media. You're not allowed to talk about it. Um, and well, now we Google, see these. Yeah. Google all the, the athletes. Like Google athletes that have been com- collapsing. Soccer players, you know, uh, football players. Just completely collapsing when, they, when otherwise they were healthy before right. all of this. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've certainly seen like some of the, the cycling athletes and others and who have done that and uh, talked about having their heart nonstop racing. They couldn't stop their heart from racing and racing and racing and racing um, because of myocarditis. Um, and uh, and they've, they they these are the type of people that monitor their blood oxygen level like every day. They know the resting heart rate. They study this because they're professionals, right? And suddenly, like their their heart beating at 145 beats a minute. They're like, um, I'm just sitting here, not doing anything. Why is my heart racing? But the you only know, difference I mean, is because I just got a booster shot. Yeah, but thank thank goodness, thank goodness that the pharmaceutical companies, these corporations, had the foresight to, um, you know, get that clause in there making that so that they're not responsible for any adverse reactions like that's it's so good that they mitigated that risk you know so that all of you that would have any kind of adverse effects you're on your own so that was good thinking pharmaceutical corporations that's i'm glad you did that oh brother well we got more news to get to here on the show if you can believe it get to this here in a second here do that here we go okay well, we've got some troubling news out of Afghanistan. Remember Afghanistan, the country we occupied for 20 years, bombed into oblivion? The country that we abruptly left last year after spending trillions of dollars with nothing to show for it? Like, if I spent a trillion dollars, I at least would hope to have something nice for it, like a, a Nintendo Switch or something. We didn't get anything. Nothing. Remember that, Afghanistan? Well, before we left and the Taliban took over, the Biden administration made the unprecedented move to freeze all of the banks in Afghanistan, stole billions of dollars in Afghan money. 
Now, as The Intercept points out, the consequences of seizing the reserves of the central bank in Afghanistan would be similar to what would happen here in the United States. Think about this for a second. The U.S. economy itself would suddenly collapse, okay, if the Fed was suddenly seized by a foreign power. In Afghanistan, businesses have been unable to secure loans. Depositors have been unable to access money that was held in their banks. Importers have been unable to fund any imports. Imagine trying to run a business where you need to import certain items and you have to spend money to do so. You can't do it. You can't make a wire. Right? I try to import things all the time. You know, I've set up like my Bitcoin miners and those sorts of things. I need to import those from different countries, right? I have to then wire money to the transport service and all that. I can't do that. What are you going to do? Pay them with cash? It doesn't work that way. Their currency basically has sounds, collapsed. It sounds like uh, sanctions. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Might as well be, right? So their currency has collapsed. Their prices have skyrocketed. More than 1 million refugees have fled starvation since the fall of Afghanistan. Now, the co-founder of Afghans for a Better Tomorrow said that what the Biden administration just did was short-sighted, cruel, and is going to serve, uh, it's going to be wor is going to be a worse catastrophe than is currently unfolding in Afghanistan. Taking money, which rightfully belongs to the Afghan people, will not bring justice, but will actually ensure more misery, he said, and more death in Afghanistan. Well, the Biden administration, we got some breaking news on this. <laughs> it's continuing to unfold. The Biden administration folded uh, folded a little bit on this because they had pressure. Hamid Karzai, of course, the former head of Afghanistan, said that this is this is an absolute human humanitarian crisis of the Biden administration's own making. So the Biden administration caved a little bit, but maybe actually made it worse. <laughs> so here's what the Biden administration did. They announced that it's going to split the money. Now, they took $7 billion. They seized $7 billion from the Afghan people. The Biden administration announcing yesterday that it's going to keep half of it. Okay, we're just going to keep half of your money. And we're going to put the other half of it into a fund. And we will decide how to spend that money in Afghanistan. Oh, wonderful. So just to be clear, we stole their money. We destroyed their country. And now we're taking half of the money that we stole and we're going to give it back in a way, but we're going to put it into a fund. And the United States will decide how we'll spend it. Sounds like a great plan, doesn't it? Because the United States can be really trusted to spend money effectively. It's one thing the American, that's one thing we know very well is that the American people can trust their government to spend money at, uh, however they see fit. <laughs> yeah. Right. So Masuada, uh, so Masuada Sultan, she is an author of a book about Afghanistan. She was born in Afghanistan. She says that this is a death knell for the people of Afghanistan. Listen to what she says about this new move by the Biden administration. Having me on, this was a devastating day for Afghans who were hoping to uh, have a sign that their economy would have a chance of surviving and that they would be able to have a central bank, which the United States uh, invested in. We spent 20 years building up a central bank in Afghanistan modeled on the Federal Reserve. Um, and training people, building systems, uh, transparency mechanisms, software systems that they could utilize to have a functioning banking system. And today, all of that is gone. Um, as an American, as a taxpayer, I think uh, it's a short-sighted policy because here we are saying to the Afghan people that we know your economy is being crippled due to our financial policies. And at the same time, we're gonna give you humanit humanitarian aid. Well, we're creating a bigger and bigger humanitarian disaster by not allowing banking to function and not allowing the economy to be back on its feet. What Afghans need more than anything uh, is food. Indeed, they need aid, but they also need jobs. They need an economy. They need to be able to import food. They need to be able to uh, pay their teachers. Pay their yeah, exactly. I mean, just look at I mean, look at this little baby. I mean, they don't need a house, right? They're fine sitting by a fire in the frozen in the frozen rocks. They don't need a house. They don't need help. They don't need anything. They don't need money. Come on. This little baby's doing fine. Yeah, they, they chose to live there. They chose to live there. They chose to live in Afghanistan. They chose to have their country bombed for 20 years and destroyed by the Americans and NATO allies, by the way. <laughs> like they're, How this ungrateful. This little baby's fine. It's doing fine. No problems here. Well, we're now learning a new development in the story this morning. And follow me on this one because it's really troubling. So... I want to know about the cronyism and just 
how awful Washington is and how Wall Street, they're all just corrupt. They're all gangsters, frankly. They're all corrupt. Well, the lead attorney, the lead attorney for the families of the 9-11 victims, follow me on this one. The lead attorney for the families of the 9-11 victims could now end up receiving that money that was seized in Afghanistan. Follow me. So it means that lawyers could end up seeing a huge windfall of cash thanks to the Biden administration. Now, they seized this money from the Taliban. They seized it from the Afghan banks. It wasn't even from the Taliban. They just seized it from the Afghan banks. Banks we set up. <laughs> Remember, we set up, we structured their banking system to mimic the Federal Reserve in the United States. So we set it up and then we took their money. So here's how this works. This attorney, okay, this attorney, I'm going to put his picture up here on the screen. There he is. There he is. There's Lee, there's Lee Woloski. Okay. He worked in the Biden administration. Well, he left in January. Now he's overseeing the lawsuit of 9-11 families who are suing the Taliban for damages. Now this whole thing was a long shot. Right? The 9-11 families weren't pushing him to do this. He, as these high powered lawyers know that they could make a lot of money off of this if they get lucky, right? They take these long Hail Mary shots at things. They're going to sue this company. They sued the Iranian government. Didn't get anywhere. They sued the Taliban. You think that's going to get anywhere? Well, guess what? It's good news now for this lawsuit because guess who has the money? Not the Taliban. The United States has that money. So that means now that this lawyer, these high profile lawyers can basically sign a legal brief, which is what they just did yesterday, asking the judges in this 9-11 families case to move, to move against the Taliban moving forward now towards a settlement because now the Taliban doesn't have this money. U.S. government does. So, hey, we don't need to go and try to track it down now with the Taliban. Just go right to the U.S. government. Meaning that this could be a massive, lucrative payday for these high-powered lawyers. Think those families are going to get any of this money? And by the way, just to be clear, why should they? <laughs> like, I understand the hardship that has been had by the 9-11 families, right? Draw me a parallel here. Draw me a connection between like the families and business owners in Afghanistan who had their money in their bank accounts, okay? It, 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 why? Because now you're suing the Taliban, which was in charge at the time when Al-Qaeda was rooted in that country and launched an attack on the United States. What does that have to do with the mom and pop who own a little store and are trying to import goods to feed their family? It has no connection. Help me here. I can't figure it out. They tried to sue the Iranian government for helping Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. They got nowhere. And, and the Taliban was not involved in the 9-11 attacks. You could argue, oh, they, 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 they harbored Al-Qaeda. Okay. Did they launch an attack? No, it wasn't them. But hell, it doesn't matter because if you're a lawyer, you can go after as much money as you want. So just to be clear, this money belongs to the Afghan people and their, their business owners. They are starving because we destroyed their country. And then we stole all of their money on top of it. And now we're handing it to basically lawyers in the United States who worked in the Biden administration. I mean, they did work their butts off, you know. They really did. They really did. And no wonder they left. No wonder he left the White House counsel in January. Because he knows a big money. Why would he leave that job? Because he knows. So he leaves this job in January, and then a few weeks later, he signs a brief going after. So he knew he couldn't have done it while he worked in the White House. He knows his money, his big money payday is there as soon as he leaves the White House, files this brief. We got the money? Great. So 9-11 families, there's going to be a big payday for the lawyers, and then it'll be hand... That's why class action lawsuits are a joke, right? Because, you know, the, the lawyers make the bulk of the money. The lawyers make like 60% of the money in class action cases. Well, and think about the, that. They, the people they, that they are hurt these, nothing. Yeah, they sue these great big corporations and the lawyers make a bank and then you get a check for 10 bucks. Yeah, or less. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, people get... And by the way, the we more... Sprint. Here's your $2.35 check. Exactly. And the more people they get onto the class, the more money the lawyers make. So, it, you know, like... And then also that means less money that you make as a person who was affected by the class action. The, the lawsuit itself. So this is this is how the United States operates. And at, I just forget about this lawyer for a second. Just think about these families, right? Think about these families in Afghanistan 
who went to try to, you know, they know the Taliban are coming. Okay, they, they want to get some of their money out of there to maybe protect their family, to put food on the table, or to escape. And then they, they find out, they go to the ATM, they go, and the, you just saw those lines at the ATMs. They're just locked, done, closed. The bank's gone. Money seized. Government, U.S. government has it. Sorry. We bombed your country for 20 years. Spent $2 trillion. We set up your banks. We're going to take our money back. Yeah, so if we ever come and bomb your country, just, you know, let us rebuild, but don't let us set up your banking system. <laughs> right. You want a banking system like ours? Uh, really, just it's just heartbreaking. And to think, you know, this time of year in Afghanistan, I mean, you see those images of those, you know, those like kids on the, you know, sitting on the ground and sitting by fires. Like, this is video from, like, this past week in Afghanistan. Really, really troubling. Um, but this is, you know, this is what we've got. This is look at that little baby sitting by a fire. Hmm. Good idea. Let's split the money in half. We'll give half to the 9-11 victims. And we'll give half. We'll, we'll, we will recycle that money into humanitarian aid. So we'll just send them food. It's like someone coming into my bank account and be like, Clayton, we, we don't think you're a good steward of your own money, so we're going to steal your money. We're going to cut it in half, and I'm going to give half to these lawyers over here for no reason, and then I'm going to give the other half to uh, to your neighborhood. I mean, that's what GoFundMe was going to do with all the donations for the truckers. They were going to say, well, we're not going to give it to the truckers. We're going to give it to some organizations that we deem appropriate. It's kind of the same thing. Right. We're going to pick our... We're going to pick our I'm sure they probably have no connection to the friends friends of the owners of GoFundMe, you know, like kickbacks and other things. I'm sure that's totally clean, totally legit. Wonder why I'm a cynical bastard. I mean, this is why, right? <laughs> I mean, as Mark S in our chat says, please try to make, please quit trying to make sense of this non-logical stuff, you know, beside behind mandates and shots and passports. The ruling elites have been playing chess for decades, and we are debating, and we are just playing checkers. Oh, we are debating checkers, and this is planned. I can't, I can't disagree with you. But see, the thing is, Mark, when you say something like that, then you're just a crazy conspiracy theorist, right? Yeah, take off your tinfoil hat. And, uh, until they... two years from now, Mark, when you will be proven right, and people will say, oh, we were making fun of you, Mark, a few years ago when you were saying this was all part of a broader agenda. Yeah, it's funny when Alex Jones becomes credible. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I mean, he says a lot of crazy stuff, but a lot of what he has said has come true. So can you throw the baby out with the bathwater? Can you throw the Alex Jones baby out with the bathwater? No. I mean, you look at you look at like Alex Jones tossed off of Twitter, tossed off of all social media. And then you look at somebody like Rachel Maddow got away with three years of, of Russian propaganda and, and misinformation and outright lies. And she's still celebrated. Yeah. Um, I, we're going to be interviewing Carol Roth. She is the author of the book called The War on Small Business, how the pandemic, how the government used the pandemic to crush the backbone of America. And her her reporting on this is astonishing. I mean, her details and journalism are fantastic. I encourage you all to read this book. She writes, and here's just a little snippet. In 2020, the American economy suffered the biggest financial collapse in history. But while Main Street suffered like never before, the stock market continued to reach new highs. How could this be? The answer is that the government had slapped oppressive restrictions on small businesses while propping up Wall Street and engineering a, a historic cons uh, consolidation of power and wealth, which is exactly what happened, by the way. And she says, this isn't a new problem. During the last financial crisis, Washington bailed out large banks saying that they were too big to fail. And when the government finally pushed out the CARES Act in 2020, it clearly favored the wealthy and the well-connected, showing that small businesses were too small to matter. There's the data. It's right there. I mean, so why would the government... The government, by crushing small businesses, it helped move those small guys out of the way for the big businesses, right? When a super Walmart comes into town, they have a lot of work to do to kill small business, right? But what if you do it for them? What if you're the government and you do it for them, right? And all well, the political contributions and everything that Walmart then makes to political candidates. I mean, it's great, right? It really feeds itself. That That is the reason why I've been so against the federal $15 minimum wage because 
the Walmarts, the Targets, the McDonald's, the big corporations, they can withstand that. They're going to be like, okay, yeah, we can pay $15 a, 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 an hour as a minimum wage, but small businesses that are just getting started in many cases cannot. And people are yeah. like, screw them then, then they shouldn't be in business. But the thing is, that is a planned thing. I remember a, a legislation that came into place by from the Waldorf Astoria. They lobbied Congress and they got this sprinkler system uh, approved and, and you have to have this specific sprinkler system in hotels and it literally overnight put mom and pop hotels that couldn't afford to, to retrofit their hotels with this system out of business. And yeah. that stuff is planned. It's planned. I, I don't know if they, it's called planned obsolescence, but they, they do this intentionally to squash their competition. And that's what this was. 200,000 small businesses went under during the pandemic. Yeah. While yeah. Mitch McConnell's wife gets a, a loan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly the case. Um, someone in the chat was saying, Alex Jones. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. See, that's the thing, right? Nebraska Covington says, I tossed Alex Jones off my hill when he said that the Sandy Hook nonsense, wrong hill to die on, Alex. I agree with you on that. Like, that's the problem, right? He says something as stupid as what he said with the Sandy Hook thing. And then he's total. Then he then he's totally discredited all across the board, right? Um. And then, of course, you know, we saw Sandy Hook parents over the weekend or just uh, yesterday uh, won that big uh, uh, suit against the gun manufacturers, Remington. So they millions have to settle. So that sort of sets a precedent in the United States now on suing gun manufacturers on this. Um, but yeah, Alex Jones. Um, I don't need to go down an Alex Jones rabbit hole, but it's funny. A lot of the stuff that he pointed out and has uh, has called attention to. You know, he, and he gets laughed at by the mainstream media. Um, a lot of it has come true. So, well, look at the percentage Nostradamus had come true, and they didn't like write him off as a. And some of his <laughs> right. stuff was wacky as <laughs> wacky as Alex Jones. Well, and, and the, the bottom line is, you know, like yeah, Nostradamus was just pontificating, right, or prognosticating, mm -hmm. right, like the like the the, the groundhog. But Alex Jones has people like sending him documents and and actual information right so a little bit different than nostradamus right he actually has data and and some, yeah. many times facts and, and sourcing hey we know? don't we don't know that uh you know somebody wasn't bringing nostradamus data in the form of like golden tablets and a hat or something we don't know maybe yeah maybe joseph smith was handing it to him <laughs> okay so, I tell, okay I, so i did a poll yeah before yeah. we get into to super chats uh we, we're up to about 500 votes um, I did a poll. Did you experience an adverse reaction after Vax? Because I, I was just kind of curious because I asked this the other day and I was shocked at the the number. 21% yes, 35% no, and 45% haven't been vaxxed. Wow. 21%. 20. That's almost half. I mean, that's that's a big number. In our Out chat of, Now we've got 500 votes. That's amazing. That's crazy. Yeah. And you should be able, you know, the thing is, you should be able to talk about it. Yeah. If you, if you talk about it, you lose friends, you get kicked off I mean, social media. So you guys can hate Ron Johnson all you want. I know he's a Republican. That shouldn't matter. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, like Clayton said. But he has given these people a voice. And every time he has done a Senate hearing with people that had adverse reactions uh, and they come in and they tell their story, literally just tell their story. That's all it was. YouTube took it down every time. You can still go get it over on Rumble, but YouTube took them down every time. There have been people trying to get their stories out, and YouTube takes it down every time. And all they're doing is telling a story. They're not even saying, like, they're obviously not anti-vax. <laughs> well, I wonder if they'll take it down today. Like, I literally, I should just link right now. I'm going to actually put it up here on the screen. I'm going to link right to the Journal of the American Medical Association where this came from today. Where, you know, specifically on this myocarditis. I mean, that's exactly where it came from, from the Journal from the journal of the American Medical Association. Here it is. Here's the link. Backed by the CDC. CDC authoring this report. Some of the employees of the CDC authoring. Yes, some right? of them. It's, yeah. yeah, it's not actually from the CDC. No, 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 no. Myocarditis cases reported after mRNA-based va vaccine in the United States. There you go. That's the story. And it, that's and it just study. makes me sad that Peter McAuliffe saw this correlation early um, and has said several times that there could have been, you know, 800,000 deaths prevented if they would have just listened to these guys that knew this information 
at the beginning. They they were seeing the correlation already. Yeah. And by the way, this is after just one dose of this. It's not even after like multiple shots and a booster. It's multiple. It's just one dose of it right here in the study in the report. So you can read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. But, you know, yeah, YouTube doesn't like that stuff. They'll take you down. No, you know, they don't They'll take you down. All right. We got some news. We got some super chats to get to. Yes. Yes. So I did put one up here that's not a super chat. Uh, Lee Curtis said, I had a triple bypass last year before getting the Moderna two jabs. My respiratory system is a lot worse now. I'm on 100 milligrams of uh, metapropol a day. Jeez. So sorry um, to hear that. Yeah. Your Imperial Majesty, my doctor told me not to boost because of reaction. Hmm. Wow. Mel Pierce uh, finance got fluid around the fiance got fluid around the heart off work for four months after. Wow. Fluid around the heart after the f- first dose or how many doses? Um, and then Ima can't forget the lady comedian that bragged about having all three shots and then passed out on stage. Yeah. I talked about her. Well, and we talked about Bob Saget too, like Bob Saget's autopsy shows that he had a major, they said that the, 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 cut on his head or the the um bump on his head was the equivalent of being hit with a boss baseball bat or falling two to three stories wow so you know was that the same because he had just gotten boosted too uh brandy kenny two people i work with that have young siblings that recently ended up oh we read that one already uh, in the hospital with myocarditis one person dropped in the parking lot minutes after they both ended up in comas um, and then Ed, our media lies, but should we trust Russia too? I don't think we're trusting Russia here. No, I think we're just looking at the facts. And the facts are that, hey, at 1 a.m. this morning, there was supposed to be an invasion of Ukraine. Is this thing working? Did your watch stop? Didn't happen. So, you know, in Russia, Russia says, we told them about these, these military exercises and they're done. Now we're going back home. And it's like that reverend that kept predicting the end of the world. It's like, oh, no, 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 sorry. I, I know I said March 5th, but uh, it's actually going to be, I got new information. Right. And each yeah. time the credibility, you know, like people still follow the dude. Oh, yeah. There's lots of, exa- there's a lots of examples of that. I just read that book by Eric Larson called Thunderstruck. And I mean, talk about like turn of the century, 1900s, like seances and things like that. You had people who were, you know, leaders and cult leaders and who were like, yeah, Hey, we're about to be, uh, you know, the, the the world is ending tomorrow night at midnight. That's what the, the spirits are telling me. People are like, oh, better get prepared. And then it, midnight comes and goes and like, I, I received another message. It's not <laughs> ending tonight. They delayed it because of celestial changes. You know, it's like, oh, OK. Imagine if like Paul Revere rode through town like eight nights in a row. The British are coming. Like, dude, you said that like a week ago. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm basing on some intel. I thought I saw a boat. Thought I, yeah, think how many lives would have been saved or motive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boy who cried wolf. But that's the thing. We keep letting them cry wolf and we, ne- we, and we still trust. Like, I don't see how anybody like that's, that was when, when they said that Biden was going to be the candidate for the democratic party. I was just like, how can somebody that has 40 years of plagiarism, of outright lying, of backing wars, of writing crime bill that uh, that uh, uh, incarcerates black people disproportionately during a time of Black Lives Matter? Like I was like, that is like the worst candidate you can push. And everybody was like, it's a, it's Uncle Joe Biden. It's Grandpa Biden. It's da- it's Biden. He's such a sweet man and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how can like. I just, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. But then you have to look at like a lot of people watch the mainstream media and they don't know that they're getting misinformation. So on the YouTube back end, when you, when you're a YouTuber and you go into your, your account, like after our live stream, right? If, if I, if I don't say anything controversial, probably fine. But what YouTube does is they'll flag us. So already, because we've been talking about controversial issues, I'm already restricted. See, the show's not even over and YouTube has already flagged us as suited, like as restriction or restricted for ad suitability. Because we've been talking about controversial things here. Was there anything in the show today that was 
incorrect, not based in fact, but YouTube flagged us because I'd like to do that. Uh, David Corbett is asking, is this thing working? How come you never answered none of my questions, Clayton or David? Not trying to be aggravating, just trying to share information. Like I don't, we've got so much chat coming in here. Like I try to see stuff. Um, my, see, the mother, our mother-in-law got the COVID shot. Yeah, put that one up on the screen, David. David, okay. we got a lot of stuff flying through here, so it's hard to see. Yeah. Um, so on mother-in-law got the COVID shot, it was fine, then got the booster, and now they are talking about putting a defibrillator in and possibly a pacemaker. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. So she was fine. Then she gets the booster. She gets a shot and the booster, and now they're talking about putting a defibrillator in and possibly a pacemaker. What did they tell you? Did they tell you it's related? I mean, what else could it have been? I guess I'm just curious. Was there some sort of pre-existing condition? I mean, I unbelievable. If you guys, if you guys want to see, like, it, it, unfortunately, if you want to see these stories uh, and see how many, like, there was a Facebook group that literally had uh, thirty thousand or so people that had had adverse reactions, and people were helping people. People were suicidal, and they were getting help because they didn't get any answers from their doctors. And Facebook shut the group down. And so you can go to Rumble and you can see testimonials. If you just type in testimonials um, from of, of COVID, you can see a lot of stories that you won't see on YouTube because they shut it, they, they pull them down. There are a lot of people that have had, I mean, we just did this poll out of 500 people, 25%. That's a lot. Red Lion says, I'm tired of your news show fading out and then it returns to the main YouTube page anytime it's controversial. Is that true? Redina says on Twitch. I'm tired of your new show fading out. It fades out. They take it down. On Twitch? She says on YouTube, though. On your, on your main YouTube page. That's crazy. You know what's amazing? I do this show, which is a, a broader sort of national news show. Right? I used to be a journalist. I spent 20 years in the mainstream media. And I, and, and I get flagged on this channel constantly for covering stories that the mainstream media doesn't want to cover like what maybe the actual truth what's going on in russia maybe the actual truth as it relates to what's happening with the freedom convoy the actual truth it's what's happening with these vaccines based on a journal of american medical association study just published and i get flagged but i have a whole separate youtube channel that i cover aliens and i cover monsters <laughs> And I cover true crime stories, my Paranormal Posts channel. I, co I cover government cover-ups of UFOs, right? I cover time travel. I cover murders, right? On my Paranormal Posts YouTube channel. And I don't get flagged. But on this channel, where I cover current events, I get flagged. Isn't that funny? Is that amazing? Like, I don't get ever flagged for covering, like, a, a a murder story, a true crime story, or this alien abduction story that I just did the other night. Like, true story. Police officer, like, abducted. Yeah. No flag. Nothing. Nothing. All good. All good. When I cover this, so though, we that's have when I get flagged. Taylor K said, I felt like I was being electrocuted for 16 hours after second. 103 fever and vomiting curled in a ball shaking thinking I was dying the electrocution thing that's a common that's a common one I see from people on on wow. the testimonials is the their whole body feels like it's electrically charged and like vibrating and crazy stuff David Corbett says yes so she went to the hospital they opened her up to do surgery for a stent but then decided not to because she had fluid on the lungs before her first checkup and is that because of the shot Wow Arlene said, no, who said this? Uh, oh, yeah, Lynn says, you're no longer in my daily feed. I need to search for your channel to listen to your news. Exactly. Yeah, so so just so you guys know, YouTube uh, about once a month goes through and, and does what they call remove bot accounts, but they end up removing actual subscribers. So if you guys are watching right now and you look down and the subscribe button is red, click it because you're actually not subscribed and, and YouTube has subscribed you, unsubscribed you. And then what you have to do also is click on the bell, but then hover over the bell and you have to now select all. So now it's not just subscribe and click the bell. Now you have to subscribe, click the bell, hover over the bell and select all, and then you'll get notified anytime we go live. 
That's crazy. It's like, it's like subscribing is not enough. I, I'm like, I'm subscribing. I want to get this channel's uh, stuff. And when I decide I don't want to, I will unsubscribe. I don't need YouTube telling me, you know, we're going to only give you some of their stuff when we feel like it's necessary. <laughs> yeah. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. Please subscribe. And, and, uh, yeah. You know what's amazing? You talk about this electrocution thing, about this like feeling of vibe. I, I, after, and I haven't put the two and two together. But after my shot, I got the J&J &J shot last year. I've noticed like like sometimes I'll feel like something's vibrating in my hands even though I'm not holding anything. Isn't it bizarre? Yeah, that's actually that's actually a common oh, I've heard great. that a lot. Well, add that to my long covid where I, my taste buds are still affected, which they are. Have you noticed have you you just said that and that made me notice something. I've not heard a word about J&J &J in a long time. No, I haven't heard anything about J and J. It's like They've they vanished from the these, conversation. Yeah, like I just now realized that. Well, I have heard about them as it relates to their cancer uh, um, uh, controversy. Was it relates to their talcum powder, the Texas Two Step that they're planning? You know. Um, so uh, let's see the J and J news on that. Um. Yeah, they start their trial on bankruptcy case. So, you know, they they basically they, they split their company up, right? So that they could then file for bankruptcy under the, like, as part of the uh, talcum powder section of their business. So they split off their, their talcum powder part of their business, their baby powder, which, of course, has 38,000 lawsuits because of cancer-related issues with it. So they broke that part of their company off, and they're filing bankruptcy over here. While they can continue to do what they do over here. Like, isn't that amazing? Like this is how wow. big business get away with this. A, a little LLC couldn't do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. A little LLC can't do this, but Hey, J and J. Yeah, I'm only going to file on the car, the, the property and stuff, but I'm going to keep this other stuff. I'm like, yeah, no, you're not. Now that oh, electrical boy. thing you're talking about, is that, is that often? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't pay attention to it enough. And I just thought like, I don't know. I don't know what I thought. You know, like, I guess, I guess you just feel like you're getting older. Maybe stuff's like acting weird, but no, like, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'll have to keep monitoring it now. But now that you say that, I'm like, oh, great. Great. Yeah. Don't go down the rabbit hole on Rumble if you don't want to hear, you know, but, but the thing is like, yeah, Alexander says my left arm hasn't been the same since I got the booster. Well, it's like the thing is, like once you start to hear stories from other people, it kind of gives you because I think a lot of people what happens is you have it and there's such a taboo around it now that you're scared to say anything because then people are going to label you as as this or that. Um, and you just want like like something to 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 understand that it's that it's, you know, it is it's real. Hearing other people say that they have the exact same thing kind of helps you cope with that. So, you know, maybe yeah. going over there, if you are having those things, go over there and find that information because there are actually groups out there for people that would like answers or would like to know like what you can do or, or something like that. David Corbett says, yes. So his, I think he said it was his mom, right? Because of the booster, never had heart problems before, uh, before the booster. Then five days after wound up in the hospital. And that's when they found the water, or the, the water around the heart. Um, and Arlene, yes, I was shut down. My channel was shut down for a week because of COVID, talking about COVID-related issues. And by the way, the stuff that we were talking about was stuff that the CDC had already talked about. Mm -hmm. And even later, like it was, it came out, it was totally proven right, but it doesn't matter. I still was was taken off YouTube for a week. I couldn't go live for a week. This, was, this is when they were training. still basically considered breakthrough cases, but now it's like... I don't even know why they would call them breakthrough anymore because <laughs> it's yeah. not a breakthrough anymore. Yeah. So we'll see how long we uh, survive here, but we're going to keep doing what we do here. Please subscribe to the channel. That really helps us share this. Please share this channel with anybody in your family you think might care to learn about what is going on in the real world. Um, we have no agenda here on the show. And as facts present them, we present the facts. So... Thank you all for your support of the channel. I really appreciate that. We did, by the way, over on my Paranormal Post channel, we published a new video last night about the Spotsville monster in Kentucky. Really interesting story. 
witnessed by police officers and firefighters. Go check out that story. Um, come over to my Paranormal Post channel. Here is the video. Just go to YouTube and, and search Paranormal Post and watch this video. We published it 14 hours ago. And see the photo there, that creature in the woods? Really cool. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. All right, everyone. Much love to all of you. We'll see you back here tomorrow once again, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Be kind, be safe, and uh, question everything. And go hug somebody. Yes, I'm gonna go hug my wife. Oh yeah, tell her I'll, tell her we said to to get better. I will, I will. And here's All a right, bad everyone. dad joke. Tell her we hope she's back tomorrow. <laughs> yes, she's in bed with a hurt back. Thanks everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. And thanks, John. John said he watched my John John Ballin. That's awesome.